This is my local bike shop, Never Cycles, and today's challenge is can I get the bus to Inverness, pick up my Sonder Camino from Alpkit, and then get it back here, ride it back here, before this place shuts. I had a few issues with the bottom bracket on my new Sonder Camino. Nick in Alpkit's new Inverness store looked at it and gave me a new one, but never cycles have to fit it, hence this one-way ride. The tail end of Storm Ciaran is giving eastern Scotland a hard time, and my route down the Great Glen threatens to be wet and windy. Just gone 10 o'clock, so it should be all right, especially if that wind gives me a shove. Turns out, I could hardly have been more wrong. So the route I'm taking is kind of the Caledonia way, but I'm not taking all the little wibbly wobbly ways. I'm pretty much trying to do the, uh, the straight route close to the east side of a Loch Ness. I know I'm in a hurry, but I had to stop to take a look because this really is a magnificent spectacle. This is the mighty Loch Ness, wreathed in cloud at the far end. And I'll be going up into that a little bit later, but it is quite a sight. Hello. Okay, now I've just had a chat with the owners of those alpacas and llamas and they do go in the water. They don't swim, but they do go in the water and they are very regularly mistaken for Nessie. How about that? Can you imagine if that was the story of the monster? It's a llama. <laughs> this is my route down Scotland's Great Fault Line. From Inverness, I'm on the Caledonia Way to the east of Loch Ness. The Great Glen Way is on the other side. In Fort Augustus, the two meet, and it should be fairly flat from that point. But I didn't realize this section has been diverted, and that diversion is not flat. That surprise lies ahead. So after stocking up with some sweets in the foyer store, I take time out to visit one of my favorite cafes. Although I'm short for time, I've only got 41 miles to go, 44, 45 miles. So I think this is worth getting some food, proper food, not just the jelly babies. Yeah, that's the only problem with a good cafe stop is you cannot stay too long, otherwise you never want to leave. Right, now you can see I've put my new waterproof on. Thank you, Rab. Got a whole lot of waterproofs from them that I'm testing out. That'll go in a future video. The big climb is starting. So every time I'm told to just move on And every time I'm told to just be strong You know that love was there when it's gone Same old blazing summer feels so long well, this is the high point, 400 meters above sea level. I'm following what was General Wade's military road built in the 1700s. A lot of history here. Over there is a loch. You might be able to see it in the distance. There's remnants of a prehistoric Cranog on that, uh, on that loch. That's a fortified little island, usually man-made. And uh, yeah, this whole glen was full of homes cleared after the 1745 rebellion. I think if I was going to split this ride over two days in summer, this is where I would camp. I mean, you might get a bit of sinking cold next to the loch, but it's probably one of the more beautiful spots on the ride. Could have been us, could have been. This is about halfway. The best thing is it's flat from here on in. Well, not flat, but flattish. Uh, no, it's not. Amazing to see just how many tourists there are here, even at this time of the year. 
early November. Such a popular place, Fort Augustus. I'm experimenting with 50 millimeter tires, which have been very draggy on the road so far, and this towpath, but that's about to change. All of a sudden, I'm enjoying having these big tires on. I'm climbing, slowly. Much as I'm enjoying this diversion, it's pretty much put the kibosh on me getting to never cycle before they shut at half past five. So I'm taking my time a little bit more, plus the fact the bike is filthy and they wouldn't want to work on it like this. So I'll give it a clean when I get into Fort William and then I'll find somewhere to, uh, to sleep in the van. Conversion left. Seems the wrong way, but there we are. It's quite a diversion this, and it is quite wet. My favourite bit of the Caledonia Way. Just as it's getting dark, we have another diversion. There's a whole lot of porter cabins here, and I know it used to go the bottom way because I used to film in this point when we filmed Maggie's Monster. So, yeah, we're now being directed up a hill. Must be a different route altogether. It's getting dark, and this lovely zigzag, a new section of the Great Glen Way, feels like it's gonna be the last thing I can, I can sensibly film tonight. I'll do some more pictures uh, on the way into Fort William, but they'll be with my lights, and I suppose it won't necessarily look as good, but thank you for watching so far. It's Friday night. <laughs> Don't think I'll be hitting the flesh pots of uh, Fort William tonight but I am very pleased that I put my sleeping bag in the back of our wee van. Oh. Well, uh, let me put this off. That turned into, <laughs> sorry, hang on. That turned into a lot more of an epic than I was expecting. <laughs> Something like seven hours of riding because of that diversion. Still, you know, if everything went to plan, it wouldn't be an adventure. That's what I'm all about. That's what this channel's all about. If you have enjoyed it, you know what to do, give me a thumbs up. Here's a couple of other adventures that you might like and uh, do check out the new Older Athlete series and see you can still be disgraceful even at the ripe old age of 65. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye. <laughs>